So after his like failed attempt to go into the human world, he and crawls work at the hot tub brothel. <laughs> yeah, he crawls back to Leah Thompson, uh, uh, Beverly. Beverly. <clears throat> and I don't. She like immediately takes him she's back. She's like, okay. And then they almost have sex, but then uh, she finds a duck condom in his wall. Oh, that was earlier in the movie. That was really creepy. Yeah, the duck condom is like, but it's not like not in a wrapper. It's or like anything. a baby just, size yeah. condom, <laughs> like the joke condoms where it fits on your pinky. It's tiny. Finger. Yeah, and uh, and so, she's and she's like giggles. She's yeah. like, Ooh. and like, he but he acts like he's such a ladies' man. So she like immediately falls in love with him, I guess. But she so he, as I said in my little one line synopsis of this, he becomes a manager of her band because she has this. <laughs> he's at the bar watching her band, and she has a deadbeat manager, and he overhears the manager joking with some guy at the bar about how, oh yeah, I'm gonna pocket all the money they made from this show. And they're not going to get any of it. And Howard's like, oh, I'm not going to take this. And he, like, sits down and he's trying to act like a badass. But it's like an animatronic yeah. fucking duck. It's, yeah, that's like four And he sits down tall. and he's, like, smoking a cigar because he's in his bill. And he's like, oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Yeah. And, and, uh, and he's drink- he has a drink, like an alcoholic drink. But there's, like, a straw, which his mouth won't close around the straw. His bill. Like beak. Well, yeah, it won't close around he the straw. He a duck. And he, the glass, he won't be able to drink from it. So it's just sitting there on the, the bar the whole time. It's not time. like he has money or a credit yeah. card or anything. I don't know how he bought it in the first place. He did place. have where, duck money that looked like human money. but And where is he getting all these cigars? Money. He's smoking yeah. cigars the entire movie. He smokes movie. a lot of cigars. Um, so this like bar brawl commences, and like the bartender hands Howard a bottle. But he smashes it over like a pole, and then drops the broken bottleneck on the, on the like ground. he didn't use it as a weapon at all. He's like, I, thanks, I, smashes it, and then just drops <laughs> so it. So there's like a bottle of vodka that he just wastes. Okay, and then there's this other line. You thought it was quacker, but I thought he said cracker. Crack. Well, I said it could have been quacker, but it sounded like cracker. He stands up because he's so short. He's three feet tall. He's standing on the bar, punching everybody in the face. That's standing at the bar. Yeah. And he he goes, this one's for you, cracker, and then punches a guy in the face. And I'm like, wow, like, how does he know yeah. human world racial slurs? Yes. And then you said it, you thought it was quacker. But either but way, even then, yeah. it's obviously alluding to cracker. It's just really weird. And so he he goes back and he gives them the money. He's like, hey, I'm your new manager. And he gives them the money. And then, like, the next scene, he's like, I don't know if I want to be your manager. Yeah. And so yeah. Like, he just, like, started a bar brawl, stole yeah. his money, and, like, made a little speech. And then he's like, I don't think I should be your manager. But but then, so, after that, the, is when they find out about the laser and everything. And they decide that they're going to try and shoot him back to his planet with yeah, the laser. Yeah, so he's going to try to teleport back to the planet. The laser malfunctions and, and it explodes. Ex- explodes. And there's like wrecked pieces up against the wall. And then uh, Jeffrey Jones, the Ferris Bueller principal, is who's like the head of the operation, it gets like zapped by the laser when and, it fails. And he's acting, he, he keeps talking about... He starts acting weird. Well, the police come to arrest, well, the police show up at this explosion. And they take Howard into custody to interrogate him like he's a terrorist and so he escapes from the police so he's pretty much on the run at this point so him and beverly and then uh first bueller principal are driving around and first bueller principal's all fucked up and uh yeah, he, leah thompson could very easily have just driven the car but yeah. she lets this guy that's like all fucked up and just got zapped by a laser drive and he's swerving all over yeah he, and he's, he, he crashes looks, the yeah, car yeah he looks stuff. like he's sick and, and he's talking about his insides feel like they're ripping and, and, and stuff so like anyway that. you come to find out that he's like being possessed by some demon because apparently demons come from a planet yeah. it's right next door to howard or uh, not howard the duck duck world um yeah and they just missed they measured it wrong so he zapped a demon down to into his himself body. so he starts transforming into this like demon thing and they're sitting down at this diner because he crashes into a diner basically yeah they, they sit down at the diner to have food everybody's weirded out because jeffrey jones is like looks all weird and sick but they're then, more weirded out by howard and then, yeah howard's a duck and um so they're all kind of being assholes, and and Jeffrey Jones is talking about how like oh I am the evil demon, I'm going to destroy the world, and they're like laughing at all. Yeah, they're they're, they're like, just oh, like whatever. You're, you're just so you're the, delusional. You're just sick from getting zapped by the laser. And the movie takes the really weird turn where it goes from like a lighthearted, goofy comedy to really creepy. the world is going to end. Yeah, and he's acting really. And crazy. at this point, we're like an hour and a half into the hour and fifty minute movie. Yeah. These three cowboy dudes just show up. Yeah. And they're like, they're That's like, hey, yeah. mama. And they're like, we're going to rape you. Yeah. And <laughs> they don't say that, but they they're like, that, but they're this- trying to like sweet talk her. And, but it's like three dudes and they're trying to pull her away. And, and, uh, and that starts a big 
fight Howard, as Howard well. gets in the way and he's like, yeah, you know, back off. And then suddenly the <laughs> entire diner, the, the wait staff, the chef, yeah. all the, the patrons decide that they want to decapitate Howard, Howard and cook him. Yeah, they, they decide that they want to cook randomly. this duck that looks like a human. This well, humanoid talking yeah, human, duck. That they want to they kill him and eat him. When first of all... Some of the people there thought he was a child. Dressed in a costume. Dressed in a costume. Which, by the way, they ordered three beers, and, and the, the lady was like, oh, yeah. child in the costume. Like, yeah. here's a beer. Here's a beer. And that's not addressed as being strange. She yeah. just gave a beer to a child. When I say that the, the diner suddenly decides that they're going to kill him and eat him. It's suddenly. It's like, literally, everybody gets up and surrounds him, yeah. lifts him into the air, and starts carrying him into the kitchen. Yes. It's like there was not even enough time for them to communicate this, like, <laughs> hey, uh, let's eat this duck. This sounds good. Like, just bam, on a dime, and, everybody. And randomly, some guy starts, like, throwing lettuce over him when he's yeah. on the table. And he's still wearing, like, clothes and stuff, yeah. and they're sprinkling lettuce on him. Like, what? And what? shoving, like, celery and in his by mouth. The way, what? what I don't know much about cooking, but I'm pretty sure when you're cooking duck or chicken, you don't sprinkle lettuce yeah. on it before cooking yeah. it. And so they like tie it. They, they tie they, down meanwhile. with rope and stuff yeah, that he, just randomly. He's in appears. the kitchen about to be like killed, and meanwhile, Leah Thompson and Jeffrey Jones are like sitting at the table. Well, Leah Thompson's like yelling. She's and, like begging for uh, Jeffrey Jones to help because he's like this powerful demon satan thing yeah and his he's like his eyes are glowing and he's all freaked out and he's like i don't care i'm a demon like yeah. fuck you yeah. and um but he's just sitting there like he doesn't get up and decide oh it's time for me to leave and then he's just sitting there at this table telling them oh, i'm a demon i'm and, gonna take and then the she world. convinces him she's like well howard has with him the the key to activate the laser so you can summon your other demon buddies and he's like okay yeah and, and that's what he, he decides starts, to like, help emperor i swear to god i say this every podcast we watch because uh, uh, the tomb had this, and um, uh, Simon Says had this, but for the third fucking time, a movie with a guy shooting Emperor Palpatine yeah. electricity out of his hands, and he zaps all the people, and then they just get angry. Yeah. They're not like freaked out or like yeah. scared or It rushed. just starts They're a like, big fight. And they start running at him, and he just starts zapping people and shooting like sound waves. And blowing at them, stuff and, like, up and igniting people on fire and yeah. everything. But then, like, like, towards the end of the fight is when this guy finally pulls out a gun. So he didn't pull out the gun at the beginning of the fight. He just pulls it out at the end, and he gets zapped anyways. Uh, Jeffrey Jones doesn't save Howard. He doesn't. Yeah. He just takes the, the key card thing, then, like, levitates Howard. Yeah, he has him, like, up in the air, gets the key card, and then decides, ah, I'm going to take Beverly, and we're just going to leave. He's like, Because I need what? to put another demon inside Yeah, he's her. like, I'm going to impregnate you with my demon hell spawn. Yeah. So let's go. And they get in the cab of an 18-wheeler truck. And just, takes and just like, ride off into the sunset. And then Howard meets up with uh, Tim Robbins. Who's in the who's, back of a cop car at this point. in the back point. of the cop car there, which I don't even know how they knew which diner these people fled to or why yeah. Tim Robbins is I guess that they just heard there. that there was a bunch of crazy stuff going on. And so Howard's like... Telling Tim Robbins to get out of the cop car, and he's like, well, the, I can't open the door from the inside. And he's he goes, like, get, a, get a rock so we can smash so the So there's window. no cage in between the back and front seat of the cop car, so he just kind of wiggles up on the front seat and plops and out the front out, window. Yeah. And then they go behind the diner, and of course, behind the <laughs> diner is like a one of those... Super light. It's like uh, a gyro, not a gyroscope. It's yeah, it's like it's a, like the thing with like, a. It's basically a hang glider with a seat and an engine attached. I think you're right. It. It's like a super light, and yeah, and it's. So they just have a plane it's just parked back there. But of course, they make jokes about how Howard has never flown because they evolved from ducks. The so, ducks, and so it's the, like yeah. how humans evolved from chimpanzees that. He's never flown because he's not built for it, but he's the one who's going to fly this thing. Yeah, so there's this really ridiculous and probably really expensive scene where they're. But flying. It, all, it it also goes from night. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah nighttime, yeah, yeah. and then so, by the time they finally get the, so, oh, yeah, the yeah, super yeah. light Wait, plane, let, let's step yeah. back here. So it's nighttime. It's the middle of the night. Actually, not even in the middle of the night. It's probably evening time. Yeah, evening. And Howard and Tim Robbins are like, "Hey, here's the super light plane. Let's <laughs> let's take it." Then it cuts to Leah Thompson and Jeffrey Jones. In the truck driving across country, and it's morning. It's and early they're morning. Showing, they're showing up at a power plant, a nuclear at a power, power plant. plant. He's like, "I need power, power." Yeah. And so he like, sticks his tongue, which is like this really weird long tentacle with penis. A, yeah, with a hook, barb. like a yeah, like a barb on the end. He sticks that into the light or the cigarette lighter of the truck, and then like zaps him, and he gets and his like, energy oh, from power. It. Yeah. And so they're driving up to this nuclear power plant, and then that's when it goes back to Howard. So yeah, so it cuts to Leah Thompson and Jeffrey Jones, and it's early morning. 
implying that they've been driving through the night. Then it cuts back to Howard the Duck and Tim Robbins, and it's like midday, and they're, and just, they're just unfolding just the plane, just barely getting the plane ready and getting to go. it and and beginning to take off. So somehow, over like a twelve-hour period, the cops didn't notice that <laughs> they didn't notice that he was the out. Cops of were the there cop the whole car. time, yeah. and they just figured out. So they're flying, and there's this chase scene, and there's this like really weird Dukes of Hazard thing where the cop cars keep crashing and falling into yeah. lakes and stuff. But the plane never really. It takes off, but it kind of just like skips over stuff and yeah, flies yeah. through a train at one point. And then he's dragging Tim Robbins through the water. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I hate you. And he's like pretending <laughs> like he wants to strangle Howard. Yeah. And it, it doesn't make any sense. It's, it's like a slapstick ridiculous. comedy yeah. at that point. Then they go to the... Uh, the dude took the detour to the nuclear plant, goes on a tour... Yeah, just, just like randomly, wanders off yeah. from the tour, and the reactor's right there. He just spins it open and walks in. Walks in like that's how the power is stored. Is it's just in some room, and it's a brightly lit white room. Yeah, and he just walks core. in. That's how he soaks up the power. So he's all powerful, and he's got like spikes growing out his back and stuff. And they, yeah. so they, they meet, uh, or they go to the laser machine thing yeah. at the science lab, and then Howard and uh, Tim Robbins show up, and. The thing which was already established as being destroyed and non-functional, which still has the broken piece laying on the wall behind them, is now totally functional. Yeah, he's he going to use it to it, summon demons. Yeah, to bring the rest of the demons in. And this is a little bit like uh, Ghostbusters or something, like with all the demons. and. Yeah. Uh, um, so he's, for no reason, straps Leah Thompson to this like, Bride I, of Frankenstein slab and underneath the laser. I think that when he said he was going to impregnate her with his demon spawn, he wasn't actually going to... In the conventional way, he was going to zap a demon oh, into see, I her. Didn't, I didn't catch that. I think I, that's what he was going to do. Her clothes were like half ripped off. I thought he was going to yeah, rape no, her. Yeah, no, he. Yeah, but with the lasers, he's going to rape her. But what was funny is one point it showed like three demons coming through the laser, and she's only one person. So are the three of them just going to like share her body as like their? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, that's later in the movie. Anyways. So there's like this thing where. Tim Robbins finds like a rail gun locked he, in a the, room. He, he, one of his friends told him about because I guess he has friends at this. And laser it's only place. blocked by a padlock, so they just take a hammer and knock the padlock, well, and they mount it on a golf cart. First, and, there's a door that's locked, and Howard the Duck just kicks the he door. Spin like, kicks it. Roundhouse kicks it like Chuck Norris. Just boom, it's open. Keep in mind, this is a three foot tall midget in a duck yeah. suit, and it's uh, this is supposed to be some high security room with this weapon, and he just kicks the door open. So they they get this like rail yeah. gun thing mounted on this little go kart. The go kart that's like built perfectly for Howard the Duck. Yeah. It's, so any it's normal high. sized person wouldn't be able to use and it. And instead of pedals, it has buttons. Yeah, that it you has press. buttons that you push. And um, he accidentally pushes it, and he's supposed to sneak up on this demon, but he pushes the button, and the cart goes flying it's a into total the room. <laughs> like slapstick <laughs> scene in the middle of the final battle of the yeah. movie. So he zaps Jeffrey Jones with it, and. It like I guess makes him stronger or something because it's power. Well, it, it kicks the demon out it, of Jeffrey so Jones. Jeffrey body. Jones is back to normal, and then the demon is just fully formed and on its own, and it's got this like weird vagina dentata mouth. Yeah, and it's, it looks like a mix between a, a scorpion and it's like and it's like a claymation thing, like yeah, in Beetlejuice. It's terrible. Or actually, it reminded me of the Rancor in Star Wars. Yeah, um, but. So they're fighting this thing, and then he's trying to shoot it with the gun again. I'm like, well, the, the gun just made yeah. this thing stronger, and you're going to shoot it again. But uh, he he does shoot it, and then it just like vaporizes. Yeah, he kills it. But then the other demons are coming through. Right. So they they, they the realize laser. the only way to stop the demons from coming and destroying Earth is to destroy the laser. But the laser is his only way to get home. But he decides, ah, I'll just destroy it anyways. Yeah. So he shoots it and it explodes. Everybody's happy. Uh, except for it almost kills everyone when right. it explodes. And he's buried under the rubble, and they think he's dead. And Leah Thompson's like, oh, God, yeah. how this world wasn't good to you. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, he's alive still, because this is like the third time this has happened, yeah. where he gets exploded, and they think he's dead. Yeah, so then he pops up, and he's all alive again, and Earth is pretty much back to normal. And then the end of, of this is... Leah Thompson's band, which is now famous, and Howard is a yeah. successful manager, yeah. and they're playing a song. And I called this. I said the first scene of them playing music in this beginning of this movie. I go, "There's going to be a fucking duck song yeah. at some point in this movie. They're going to sing a song about ducks. I just know it." And of course, the ending sequence, she's singing a song. Howard the duck, do 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 do. And like, yeah. <laughs> 
it's basically <laughs> it's terrible. The really weird thing is that if you think about it, her band's success and like career is it's, based on a hit single about her fucking a duck. Yeah, it's it's based on this duck who still is messing stuff up towards even the end of the movie. I. I, I would like to think of this movie as, instead of being Howard the Duck, I'd like to think of it as a really offbeat sequel to Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> because that's the only thing I can think well, of when I see there Jeffrey was Jones. Only, there was only one person from <laughs> Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I just like to picture movie. it like Jeffrey Jones retires being a principal after the horrible days of Ferris <laughs> Bueller's movie. And he becomes and, a scientist. And he's, he says, you know what, I want to reinvent myself. He goes, he goes to school, becomes a scientist, starts this science, it had some generic name like Kineditech or something. <laughs> and, and then things go awry and he's, yeah. he gets possessed by this demon and meets an interstellar duck. I just like to think of it as Ferris Bueller too. Uh, but that's probably wishful thinking. Yeah. Uh, so, so that was that was the end of the movie. Was with that that's stupid it. song. I, do you have that any more you want to say about it? I don't. No, that's pretty much all we can say about <laughs> uh, it. it. It was terrible. I had a one star rating on Netflix. Yeah, which is bad because usually even the shitty movies it gives me at least one and a half stars on it. Yeah, um, I would say that was a very well deserved one star. Um, I would even say it was like half a star, maybe. Out of ten. Uh. Yeah, it would have to be one at the most. One out of ten. Yeah, because it's think terrible. That I would give it a two out of ten. This is the first movie I've not given a three to, and I don't want to go as far <laughs> as a one because the clip that we saw of Birdemic That's looked true. like Birdemic, Birdemic. I think I would was give a one. Terrible. So I actually no, it was no. Let's put it no, 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 no. I wouldn't give Birdemic a one because Birdemic was like filmed with a handy cam. This had a thirty-six million That's dollar true. budget. That's true. And it was still okay. this terrible. I will give it a 1.5, okay. and I will reserve the one for a bad movie that we will one day find, but 1.5. I, I think I think this movie is that bad movie. Do so you the, give it a one? Yeah, because the budget is what gets me. And okay. George Lucas, and the fact that the actors aren't terrible actors, but the movie as a whole I'm waiting for one that was also edited poorly and shot poorly, because eh, this is actually shot well. I think that that'll be my half-star rating, though. Okay. Yeah. I give it. I give it a, a one point five. I give it a one. You give it a one. Uh, Howard the Duck from nineteen eighty six. 